If you're watching this on a Mac, chances are you're using Chrome or a Chromium-based browser. Sure, those are good browsers. And whether you want vertical tabs or AI-assisted browsing or even just better extension support, Chances are you can find a browser to fit your needs. But for me, Safari actually does everything that I need it to. So let me tell you six reasons why I like to use Safari as my primary browser on Mac and a couple things that annoy me. But let's start off with hide my email address. Hide my email is a great feature of iCloud Plus that allows you to completely obscure your own private email address and not give it out to websites you don't wanna give it out to. Say for example, you wanna purchase something from a company that you're never going to use again, but you don't wanna keep getting spam email or risk them having a security breach and getting your email address leaked out. This is when hide my email can be used. It's incredibly simple to use. All you need to do is tap on an email address field. And then instead of tapping on your email address, you go down to hide my email. And here you're gonna see a completely randomized email address that just forwards to your private email account. So whoever you're giving this email address to will never see your regular real email account. And down here, you can see that this hide my email address will be used for this website, macweldon.com in this example. So we'll just go ahead and tap use. And now you can see that this private email address will now be used if I sign up for this newsletter. And it's super simple to stop getting this newsletter. Instead of going into an email and hitting unsubscribe and maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, whatever, I can go into iCloud settings, search for the website that I used hide my email on and click on deactivate email address. And that's going to deactivate this so I will never receive another email through this address again. It's super simple to do and you can even use this to replace all of your logins for accounts or websites that you don't necessarily trust the most and use a private email address so if something happens, they sell your information, they get hacked or whatever, they don't have your real email address. But hide my email also works great with the next feature that keeps bringing me back to Safari which is Apple Pay. Apple Pay is super convenient for checking out on websites without having to enter all of your personal information over and over. So you just tap on the Apple Pay icon and it pops up with what card do you wanna use? What is the contact information? What's the ship to address? And if you wanna use hide my email with Apple Pay, you click the edit button right here with contact information. And down at the bottom, you can tap on hide my email address. And now you will get that secure hide my email account that will only be used for this transaction. And if you don't know how Apple Pay works, it works similar to hide my email by completely obscuring your actual information. Instead of sending your credit card info to the retailer or the processor of the transaction, it will create a randomly generated secure code for that one transaction. It's a one-time use. So if something happens during that transaction or that retailer or the processor gets hacked, they can't get your actual credit card information. And once you're ready, you just complete the process with face ID or touch ID, and you're all set with a much faster, cleaner, easier, safer checkout process. Next up is Safari tab groups, which allows you to create different groups of tabs that you save and of course sync between devices. Tab groups are awesome for grouping together different things like activities or something that you're trying to do where you wanna have everything all in one space. For example, Vietnam hotels, like I'm going to be traveling to Vietnam at some point in the future and so here, I wanna be able to take a look at all the different hotel options as I research. You know, What part of the city do I wanna be in? What's my budget? What amenities am I looking for in a hotel? This will allow me to have all those tabs open at the same time and easily be able to go back and forth to compare them. Another project I'm working on is the Office Makeover, as you can kinda of start to see here. And for that, I have a different tab group for Office Makeover and I have just tabs upon tabs of different things here that I want or I'm looking at or comparing against uh, for my new office setup. And these tab groups are synced between all your devices, iPhone, iPad, Mac, whatever. Any changes or new tabs that you add or remove will be propagated to the other devices as well. But you can also share these groups. So if you wanna share this group with somebody else because you wanna work together, you can also share the tab group and then somebody else can also add and remove tabs as needed so you guys can work together. The next thing I like using about Safari is the iCloud passwords. Now you've been able to save passwords inside Safari for many years. And of course, every other browser also has their own password storage options. Or you can go with third-party password management like OnePass or LastPass. But because the password management is built right into the operating system, I feel like Safari works better with it than it does with third-party password options. You don't need to install any additional software or extensions to get it to work. Using your iCloud passwords is super simple in Safari. Uh, we'll just log into this website that I never use. And you can see right here that I'm using hide my email for this account. So all I need to do is provide touch ID 
and it enters the login information and the password, and now I can log in and I'm good to go. Another benefit to iCloud Passwords is that you also get two-factor verification built in, so you don't need to use a separate app like Google Authenticator or Authy or whatever. And just like how you would sign in with your password, all you need to do is click inside the MFA or two-factor authentication box, and you should have the option pop up. You go ahead and just use your fingerprint and your code is entered. But even simpler than that is the built-in pass keys. Pass keys are the login way of the future that allow you to log in without a password. It's kind of like your login information and password and two-factor authentication all in one. So for example, logging into this website right here, I have a pass key for the site. I just click sign in with pass key. It's gonna pop up for my fingerprint and touch ID logs me right into the site. It really just does not get any simpler than that. Another benefit of using Safari over another browser like Chrome is that it's more safe or more secure. Apple says Safari is designed to prevent tracking and secure your information when you travel across the internet and jump from site to site. And there's a couple of different ways that they can do that. And you can actually view a report about how Safari is protecting you by going up to the Safari menu and clicking on privacy report. And here you're gonna see that 181 trackers have been trying to profile me in the last 30 days and they've been blocked. I'm generally not that concerned because I'm going to travel across the web. I'm going to do things. It doesn't matter. I'm logged into Google on so many different apps and websites that they're following me somehow in some way. Sure, I would like my information to be more private, but I'm also just not going to go out of the way to try and secure what I do on the internet. I'm not going to add a VPN or add ad blockers because every time I do, something on the internet breaks when I try to access it. So whatever built-in privacy controls Safari has by default is what I'm going to use. And I appreciate that it's there, even if I don't necessarily feel like I need it. And the last big feature of Safari that I really have come to enjoy that's new with macOS Sonoma is being able to save a web page as an application. So for example, here's Threads. There is no separate Mac app for Threads. And what if I just want to use this as its own window and not a tab inside of Safari? By the way, if you want to find me on Threads, I'm Jerry Schultz on YT. So if I want to save this as a separate application, all I need to do is go up to file and click on add to doc. And it's going to add this as a separate web application that I can open and close and move around freely, completely separate of a Safari window. So I'll go ahead and add it. And here we are, bring it up here. If I open it up, it looks like it's its own application. It has its own notification options. It works just like a separate application would on, I guess, any other application. I can resize it to make it whatever size I want. And then I can pop in and out of Safari to do whatever I'm going to do. And I can go back to threads and post something about a video. And you can do this with any app that you like to just have off on its own. So if I want to have The Verge as a separate application, I can do that as well. We'll save The Verge, add, and now I have a Verge application on my Mac, completely separate from Safari. That's pretty cool. And before you leave the comment, I do know that other web browsers also have that ability. So now there are a number of things that I don't like about Safari or things that could be improved. But first I wanna tell you about the Soho dock from today's sponsor, CalDigit. The Soho dock from CalDigit is a compact USB-C dock that provides all the features you need for a simple home setup or on the go. And since this is a 10 gigabit per second USB-C dock, you get double the performance of traditional USB-C docks and hubs. You get dual SD card readers, a 10 gigabit USB-A port, and a 10 gigabit USB-C port on the front. On the back, you get two video outputs that let you run up to two displays mirrored at 60 hertz with a Mac or PC, which you can't do with a traditional hub or USB dock, and you can run up to two extended displays at 30 hertz on Windows only. This super portable dock doesn't need any external power to run your connected devices, but the Soho will allow pass-through up to 100 watts of power delivery to your computer using an external power brick and the USB-C power pass-through port on the back. So if you want to expand what you can do with your phone, laptop, or tablet on the go or at home, check out the CalDigit Soho dock today using the links in the description below. And my thanks to CalDigit for sponsoring this video. Now, when it comes to things I don't necessarily love about Safari, I have a little bit of a list for that as well. And the first one is Safari is a memory hog. I know that everybody says Safari uses less memory and less resources than other browsers. I just don't see that. And look, I can prove it to you. Here is my Office Makeover tab group inside Safari. And we'll just tab through them, make sure that they're all loading. And then I have the exact same tabs open 
in Brave, which is a Chromium-based browser. And all the tabs are open. Oops, let's go ahead and stop that. We don't need to hear that. But if I go and look at the memory usage of these two browsers that have the exact same number of tabs and the exact same websites open, which one do you think is using more memory? Well, we'll just go and look at this. So look at that. Safari is using just under six gigabytes of memory compared to 4.3 or 4.4 on Brave. Safari is using a gig and a half more to run the exact same amount of tabs and the same web pages. This is crazy. I don't know why everybody says that Safari uses less resources because I never see that ever. Not only that, Safari frequently feels slow. So just doing a quick benchmark on the brand new speedometer 3.0 web test, which tests all kinds of different websites and web features, we can get a benchmark of the performance of each browser. And it's not that Safari always feels like it's slugging along. Usually it feels very, very fast, but every now and then it just doesn't. Like I have to quit the browser and reopen it. And Apple says that Safari is the fastest browser on Mac. So here we get a score of 28.5 on the new speedometer 3.0 test, which is made in part with Apple. Well, if we go over to Brave, I got a score of 32.3. That's like 30% faster or something, which obviously means Safari is not the fastest browser but it's not just benchmarks. I actually feel the speed difference when I use another browser compared to Safari. It just seems to respond and load faster than Safari does. Then there's issues with Safari tabs where if I leave it for a period of time, maybe it's 10 minutes, maybe it's 15 hours and I come back and the tabs just don't respond. I either have to refresh the page or completely quit Safari and reopen it to get it to work correctly again. Like here's an example with Google Docs. If I leave this document open for, I don't know, a couple of hours and then come back to it, the page is completely messed up. It doesn't respond correctly. It kind of messes up the whole UI and there's nothing I can do about it except for refresh the page. Is that a big issue for something like Google Docs? No, probably not because you just refresh the page and all the data is still there. It's not a loss of anything. But it is weird that Safari just can't render the page correctly or it forgets to over time. Then there just are other websites in 2024 that just don't like Safari and only want a Chromium based browser, which kind of stinks. So in that case, that's when I have to switch over to Brave temporarily to use it for a specific site. And then I go back to Safari. I wish I didn't have to do that. But those are the things that really kind of bug me about Safari. It's not a lot. It's not enough to make me stop using Safari, but they are annoying and I wish they could be fixed or be better. I've tried all the other browsers, Orion, Arc, Edge, all of them. I've tried the vertical tabs. I've tried the AI browsing. None of it really fits the way that I work. And like I said, I don't really use any extensions in Safari or other browsers if I don't have to. I especially don't use Adblock because it just breaks more websites than what it helps me avoid in ads. But overall, I do like Safari. It is the browser that works best for me on my Mac. And of course, because of my other devices, all the syncing capabilities, I find that it works well enough for my regular everyday use. But I'm curious what you guys think about Safari. Is that the browser of choice for you or are you using something else because it has way better features or something else that you really need? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you're new to my channel, you should definitely check out this video right over here. That one. Hit the thumbs up button if you liked it. Hit subscribe if you want and I'll see you next time.